Hi, this is episode 26 of Krondos. I'm your host, Jordan Hudgens. I'm a Ruby dev and the CTO of the DevCamp platform. I had some clients to meet in Southern California, so I'm filming this week's episodes from Laguna Beach. And even if you're not able to work from the beach this week, hopefully I can help make your Monday a little bit more manageable. On Mondays, I like to cover a complex development topic and give a dead simple explanation on how it works and how you can apply it in your own applications. And today, I'm going to help walk you through an FTP tutorial, focusing on what FTP is, how it can be used, and lastly, give a walkthrough on how to use it in a real world application the way that I use it. So what is FTP? It stands for File Transfer Protocol, and essentially it's a networking mechanism that allows for files to be transferred from one system to another. For example, if you have to build a static HTML website that you want users to be able to access from the internet, you can use FTP in order to push your files from uh, from your local machine to a remote server. You're also able to use FTP to transfer any type of file. There have been many times where I've utilized FTP to transfer large files between myself and someone else who's working remotely. The services such as Dropbox and Google Drive have decreased FTP's usage for file sharing. However, it can still be really helpful if you're working in an organization that blocks third-party file sharing services. FTP FTP is great for a simple website deployment and sharing public information. However, if the files being transferred need to be protected, it's recommended that you, you utilize FTP's prettier cousin, SFTP, which stands for SSH File Transfer Protocol. FTP simply creates a connection with another server and shares the file. However, during transit, the files can be hijacked so it would be a poor choice for sharing sensitive information. SFTP follows a similar process, except that it encrypts the connection, making it a much more secure and better option if you're transferring files that need to be protected. Now that you know what FTP is, how can you use it? Typically, you'll want to use an FTP client. Some popular ones are FileZilla and CyberDuck. They're free and they'll work great if you simply need to transfer files. I usually use Coda myself because when I want to transfer files, they're usually code files and Coda comes with a very nice text editor which makes it a lot easier to edit files on the fly. The steps for using FTP or SFTP uh, is the same as using these type of tools and so it doesn't really matter which client you're using. Uh, the steps are as follows. One, you select the protocol, either FTP or SFTP. Second, you enter the server URL. You can get this from your hosting company. It's usually ftp.yourdomain.com. Third, select the port. If you're using SFTP, the default port is 22. However, that can be customized. Fourth, enter in your, S your FTP username. If you don't know this, you can also get it from your hosting provider. Lastly, enter your FTP password. Assuming that you've entered in all the correct information, you'll be logged into the server and then you can simply start dragging and dropping files. Here's what it looks like when I log into the crondos.com website. The window on the left hand is, contains all my local files and the pane on the right is the server. And to transfer files, I can simply drag and drop them between the windows. Depending on the FTP client that uh, that you choose to use, the user experience will differ slightly, uh, but the concept will be the same. I hope this has been a helpful tutorial and will help you work with your own development projects. In the show notes, I've also included some links to some other resources that can help you further your understanding on how FTP works.